Good morning, my people. Today we're gonna be making brown scapulars. Brown what? A brown scapular. A brown scapular is a Roman Catholic sacramental. It is worn to guard your heart from front and back. Like so. And they can only be made from wool. We'll learn a little bit about the history of the brown sac uh, scapular, how it was given to St. Simon Stock in the year, oh, my eyes are bad and I'm looking at the light, 1251 by the Blessed Virgin Mary as a protection um, to keep you from evil, to guard your heart, and to use basically as your spiritual armor. Um, it's made of wool because that is, um, Mary loves wool a lot. Every time she gives a scapular, and she's given more than one scapular uh, throughout the centuries, it's always wool. And um, this one is brown. It belongs to the Carmelite order. And uh, we'll be uh, making another brown scapular today. It starts out needle felted, and then it gets wet felted for the element of surprise because you never know what's going to happen to your needle felted design once it gets shrunk and reshaped through the magic of wet felting. So let's get started. Okay, elements that you're going to need for this project. Some brown wool. This is wool batting. This is Berkshoff. You can use any type of brown wool you want. I just really like natural brown. And so um, this was super easy for me and I had a whole bunch of it on stock. Now, you're also going to need, oh, you know, a little selection of any colors that you might want to incorporate in your design. Now, a design is not necessary for a brown scapular. A brown scapular can be plain squares of wool um, connected with, you know, any kind of ribbon. Or so I like to use my, um, my homespun... Um, yarn. This is some of my very first yarn. See how squiggly it is? <laughs> I did that on a little, um, what do you call them? Spindle. I did it on a spindle. I believe. I think I did that on the spindle. I might have done it on the thing, but if you've got a spindle, you can get a t spindle for as low as like 14 bucks, or if you happen to have a spinning wheel, great. If you don't have either of those, use any string you want, or even use some flat, um, lace or whatever that you just have to secure it all in one piece okay so we're gonna you're gonna need something to needle felt on I use just an old cushion see I took this old cushion apart and I uh, have my needle this is just a standard gauge needle I think it's like a 38 um, standard it might I don't even know what kind of tip it is now it's just your basic needle it you don't need to get fancy on your needles people um, especially since you can't do that much detail. Maybe you can if you're special. Maybe you can't do that much detail um, on a square. The tinier you go, the harder it is. And I wouldn't recommend getting too detailed because when you, um, if you do, once you wet felt it, a lot of that itty bitty tiny detail goes. So if you don't know how to uh, needle felt, just a little quiz here, a little basic primer, um, you're just going to, you see, the wool just sticks on there. A ne needle felt needles have teensy tiny little barbs. They're exceedingly sharp, so be very careful and do not let young children do this. Also, tip, do not ever try to twist your needle. They will break. I've had students do that, and it's kind of a drag because you have to almost always order needle felt needles online. There's very few places that sell them at brick and mortar stores. So you'll do that and see now, now I have the beginning of a face right there. So that's how the Blessed Virgin Mary's face starts out. I usually do her face. I do wherever her hands are going to be. Her hands are going to be extended out. Sometimes they're in prayer. So I figure out where in relation to her body would prayerful hands be. And then if I'm doing her mantle, I mean, that's just super easy. Here's some beautiful locks. You can do her mantle from the locks. You could take some other blue and um, drape it around. It's always good to, you know, drape 
and kind of see how things are going to look beforehand. So basically, you needle felt it when it's in this batting situation. And then once you get your needle felt design all poked down, including these sides over here, get that poked down pretty good um, so it's fairly thinnish, then you're going to start wet felting. Uh, in 1917. So, um, scapulas seem to be kind of a favorite thing of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And basically, it's a small version of the habit that the monks wear, which is why it needs to be of, of wool, always wool. There's, sometimes it's brown wool, sometimes it's white wool, sometimes it's gray wool, depending on which saint she gives it to. And that's the color of their habits. So I'm just taking my um, my wool here. I've needle felted a design on there. I've got my soap. And what I love about making scapulars or any sacramental really when I'm when I'm needle felting and wet felting is that when I wet felt it, you know, you don't know exactly how it's going to change. And that's I love, 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 love to just say a little prayer. And say, Lord, just make this turn out however you would want to make it turn out. Just, you know, I've laid down the wool, but you're free to alter the wool, twist the wool, move the wool in any way that would give you honor. And so that's what I love about making scapulars is that, see, I don't really know exactly what's going to happen. See my flames around my burning heart of Christ here. This is the sacred heart of Jesus. As I um, move those around, the uh, flames move, and so do the, does the wool around the, um, you know, this is the symbolic of the um, crown of thorns that was around Christ. That moves around. And that is just so much fun. So let me uh, gonna rinse it a little bit here. And you might be able to see it a little bit better. You see, you see how those flames are really coming out? Isn't that cool? If I could zoom in. No, I can't. Well, no, I guess I can. Zoom in a little bit. My hands are a little wet. This is kind of dangerous to be filming with wet hands. But um, that goes like that. And then... Uh, my Mary is a little, I don't know how this is going to turn out because her globe is silk. And the silk does not, um, it doesn't felt quite as well and it doesn't shrink at the same rate as the wool. So keep this in mind. If you're wanting to incorporate silk and you need your ultimate piece to shrink, it's not going to shrink as much. As the wool so this this is the reason that I made her dress a base of it wool and a little bit silk now this will okay so here we are it's all felted um, you know this thing used to be kind of longish at the edges but now it's just a little slightly over the length of my hand so what I've done is I've cut them and uh, I'm also going to trim this way, like this. And then I'll refelt the edges. Now, these are really a lot bigger than my other ones. Trim them down just a little bit more, even. Because, see, these other ones are this big. And those are still a lot bigger than the ones that you, if you were going to order them from the Carmelite nuns, because you can't order them online. The nuns make them, um, but they have um, printed fabric. It's like a silky fabric that they sew onto the wool instead of having the whole thing be wool, which is uh, easier to do and way less time consuming. And then you can keep it uniform each time because you can never fully replicate. <gasps> Ooh, gosh, I don't want to make that smaller. Ah, oh, rats, that one's going to be smaller. Oh, well, too late now. Just try not to make it any more, uh, any more shorter. See, because I don't want to get rid of her globe. That's the thing. I have her standing on that globe. 
And I don't want to get rid of her crown and her little halo thing either. So she's just going to have to be larger on one side. Darn it. I mean, I could take off her globe. If I took off her globe, what would that look like? Mm, it would look weird. She's got to be standing on her globe. Sorry. Sorry, people. Okay. Well, I'm making this for one particular person. And hopefully, he'll just be understanding. Now, let's see, that's pretty thick now. Um, so what I'm going to do... Uh, this one's not as thick, is it? No. It's not, but I probably just used way more stuff, and I rolled quite a bit on this one. So now I'm going to refill the edges here so that they're um, with just soap and water. I'll just soap and water that around. It'll probably end up being a little more curved like the other one. And then I'll get some uh, yarn, probably not this yarn because it's a little scratchier, but I'll get some yarn, and I will connect the two sides. Yeah, so he'll wear one on the front, one on the back. Um, and you can wear either side. Ooh, the yellow actually does look kind of good. Well, I guess it's not scratchy. This is nice because it's flesh colored. Um, so it doesn't show up. You're supposed to wear these under your clothes, by the way. You're not supposed to be flaunting your, your Carmelite spirituality. Um, although I am sort of by teaching you how to make these, but, um, Anywho, I do want you to know how to make them because I think it's a great activity and it's a fabulous gift. These used to be given uh, to almost everybody as a first Holy Communion gift and people would get enrolled in the scapula like immediately after. That was very popular in the 1950s and 60s. So um, if you know somebody who's about to have their first Holy Communion, might want to make them a brown scapular, especially if they're attracted to, um, you know, the Marian movement. That is all. I hope you enjoyed that. If you have any questions, please feel free to shoot me down a message below and I will get back to you. Bye-bye.